A former colleague reached out via text to say hello recently. A part of her message read, I need to tell you about something. I want you to watch Ole Miss basketball team, the women's team in the tournament. Their coach reminds me so much of you and has since day one when she took the job. They have set the number one seed yesterday. Now, my I'm a black woman from Memphis lens showed up first. When I thought about the toxic work environment of the organization where she and I had worked together a number of years ago, I had an immediate reaction. Offended, right? Then my professional diversity and inclusion lens immediately showed up. I went and I looked and found pictures and videos of Coach Yolette McPhee McQuinn. I have much re respect for Coach Yo. She seems to be a talented coach, a beautiful, strong, bohemian American woman. And for those amazing reasons, I take no offense to the comparison. Now, as a diversity and inclusion practitioner, I always try to take the approach of a balanced perspective. And there are two important viewpoints to consider in this example that I'm sharing with you now. I want to start by sharing where this presents the ongoing challenge for Black people and other marginalized groups. Now, this valid and important point is one that many of Asian colleagues, especially those of you in the workplace, you might not understand. The continued comparison of people who do not look alike, who do not talk alike, who do not walk alike or act alike in any way can present a challenge. With the exception of us having the same melanin and body type, there's really no comparison. Basically, you look at the optics of race and gender, and that gives way to this subtle discriminatory practice that really needs to cease. Now, these comparisons are not, are not compliments, right? Although well-intended, the random comparison of me to another Black woman, this is an example of those types of comments and, and slights and things that come out of some people's mouths in the workplace that really need to be considered um, as an opportunity for change because they oftentimes show up as offensive. So this example of a comparison to Coach Joe is a variation of an all too familiar term, microaggression. So this colleague's limited interaction with black women resulted in this more subtle type of a microaggression that has become woven into the normal daily lives of folks without consideration to the impact that those things may have on other people. A slight math as a compliment could be glaring in this case. Now, this could be the case. However, I want us to always look at it from a balanced perspective. And there are two different ways to look at this case. Let me now give you the second way. So I can't end this, of course, with that one-sided view where we only look at the microaggression demonstrated by a Caucasian female with a lack of understanding. That's one lens. Let me challenge some of you, those of you who look like me, to make a different choice in your thought process. Even when you are a person offended by the microaggressions of others and being negatively impacted, you can make a different choice. So consider this. When I sent a follow-up message to my former colleague indicating, oh, I don't get it, please explain. She said, it's her personality. Watch her interview from last night after her win. It should be on ESPN. She's a spitfire and full of faith. So the black woman in me from Memphis, that Lynn said, oh, now I get it. She's referring to the respect that she had for me during the time when we worked together. That was a very challenging environment and I was able to navigate it. And there were always references by this colleague and others of how I showed up as strong yet considerate and all of those types of positive uh, um, comments. Her effort to acknowledge me in a positive way was almost taken the wrong way because of how she initially positioned her thoughts. For a person to understand their intent versus impact, follow-up and feedback is needed. So I made a different choice. 
by asking a simple clarifying question to which her response provided me with better understanding of her intent. And I wanna encourage you to do the same thing in those moments. Take a step back and in a thoughtful way, follow up, ask questions, provide feedback. So some key points that I want you to remember as takeaways from this, remember intent, behavioral choice and impact. You may have good intentions, but your behavioral choices may have a negative impact. Take in the feedback and make a different choice. Secondly, call out the behavior in the right way. To give space for that learning, so in the future that person can actually be thoughtful about what they say and actually compliment someone and make sure that compliment comes through and not the offensive comparison. Call out the behavior in the right way. And then lastly, and specifically, for those of you with the amazingly beautiful melanin in your skin like me, <laughs> work on more effectively navigating the moment of negative impact. In a thoughtful and considerate way, you want to identify the intent of the person and bring awareness to the offender's impact on you. It's all about communication, folks. And for that last key point, some of you should even be reminded of what you say you believe, right? Let me tell you what some of you say you believe and remembering to apply this. Be quick to listen slow to speak and be slow to take offense and to get angry. Hats off to you, Coach Joe. Proud to be compared to you. 